Hi guys, welcome to this webcast. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the microscopic anatomy of the liver as well as uh, the flow of bile from your liver to your small intestine. So the liver is going to be made up of cells called hepatocytes. So hepato is the prefix for liver and cytes is for cell. But those hepatocytes are going to be organized into functional units. And that functional unit is going to be called the liver lobule. Liver lobule. And this is going to be about the size of a sesame seed, so it's a rather large, microscopic feature. Uh, the, fun the functions of the liver can be uh, broken up into two main categories, and that's digestive function, which is going to be to produce bile, and metabolic function, which is going to be to store sugars as glycogen, store sugars as glycogen, and then also uh, detoxify the blood. Detoxify the blood from drugs and alcohol and poisons. And it's also going to break down fats and amino acids. So this liver lobule is going to be this octagonal shaped structure made up of sheets of hepatocytes and it's going to have at each corner of this octagon something called a portal triad portal triad so we're going to have to back up for a second and discuss what's made up of that portal triad I'm going to find one more thing here in the center that's going to be central vein Central vein. So, blood's going to enter both venous and arterial blood is going to enter the the liver, and it's going to bathe together before it reaches the central vein. And that venous blood is going to come from your small intestine. So, where you're digesting food, you're going to have blood coming straight from the small intestine to and pass through the liver on its way to uh, its return to the heart to be reoxygenated to heart and lungs. And that's where, that's how nutrients get from the food you eat to the liver. And then arterial blood is going to come through. Like I said, it's going to bathe with this, with this venous blood uh, at these liver lobules before returning through the central vein and to the vena cava. So this portal triad, let's go back to this color, is going to be made up of the venous blood, uh, so I'll start using the terms. It's going to be a portal arterial, portal arterial, small artery, which is O2 blood, and then portal venule, which is venous blood, and also a uh, bile duct bile duct. So these two are going to be transporting its contents to the liver lobule, whereas the bile duct is going to be transferring bile that's made in the liver lobule away from the liver. So this portal, and art portal arterial, portal venule are branches of the hepatic portal vein and hepatic portal artery. And those are going to come, I already discussed that route. But what's key here, we're going to get into, is then how these mix and what they do. So we have the venous blood. So portal venial blood and portal arterial blood come in and mix through liver sinusoids. So it's going to come in here and mix through these liver sinusoids which are fenestrated capillaries. So we're at the liver sinusoids. These fenestrated capillaries are going to be capillaries with large spaces for not the actual blood cells, but uh, the other parts of the blood to leave that capillary bed and bathe across the hepatocytes. So mixed blood 
bathes, bathes hepatocytes, hepatocytes. And then from there, it's going to passively diffuse back into a capillary and then towards the central vein. And blood enters central vein. And then this is going to return into these intralobule veins and then eventually uh, your vena cava, which is going to be how the, the return system for uh, deoxygenated blood to the heart. So that's two parts of the portal triad. That third part is that bile duct. So bile duct. Bile comes from uh, the hepatocytes and comes from the bile canaliculi, canaliculi to bile duct. It is running away from the liver. This is going to be into the right and left. Hepatic ducts, and then into a common hepatic duct, and then from there we'll discuss what happens. And all three of these guys I mentioned earlier are part of the porta hepatis. So these are the main three vessels you're going to think about coming through the porta hepatis. Enter, leave liver through porta hepatis. Cool. So we talked about how blood comes from the small intestine through these portal triad systems, through fenestrated capillary, capillaries, gets processed by the hepatocytes in the liver lobule and then enters the central vein and returns back into circulation. So now we're going to talk about the flow of bile. Bile flow. So bile is always being produced by your liver. There's no, there's no real on and off switch for bile production. And so it needs sort of a backup system for when it doesn't need it, because you only really need bile when you're digesting foods. Specifically fatty foods is what uses a bile, because uh, it emulsifies those fats and allows them to be broken down. So we have those right and left hepatic ducts leaving the liver. And, and right about here, we have the porta hepatis. So you have the portal vein and artery there too. So let's say boundary of liver. And eventually this is going to run to the small intestine, right? So we'll, we'll make this drawing head towards the small intestine. So we can get a complete drawing here. So this is the duodenum. This is a part of the small intestine. But if this is always producing, so if this is producing bile and we're needing it to digest food, then you're going to have the bile coming through here happily and depositing into the small intestine so that we can break down food. However, if we're not needing to digest food, it's going to need to go somewhere else. If this is constantly producing it, you don't want that backing up in your liver. You can imagine that that wouldn't be a good thing. And so what we have is a structure called the gallbladder which I would love to tell you is where your body stores gall, but it's where it stores, stores bile. Gall bladder. So, when, you, when your body doesn't need this bile getting pumped into your duodenum, you have a sphincter that closes up at the bottom here and causes that bile to back up and follow this reverse path into the gallbladder. And then when it needs it again, that sphincter will open and this bile will flow out of the gallbladder and then back into the circulation. So what I didn't mention earlier is how this breaks apart. So we have the hepatic ducts. You have a right and left hepatic duct. When those come together, you have 
common hepatic duct. Here we have the cystic duct leading to the gallbladder. Cystic duct and common bile duct. Common bile duct. And where this comes together, the pancreas actually comes in together as well. And it's called uh, uh, the hepatopancreatic ampule, I think. I'm not sure on that one, so I'm not going to write it down. But what you want to know here for this is this sphincter here that closes off when bile isn't needed into the small intestine. And so then it backs up into the gallbladder. When that releases, you're going to have bile dumping back out of the gallbladder and then into here in circulation. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later.